So we're on our quiz review. Number one, give two names for the plane. Whenever we name a plane, what do we always have to write? The word plane. If I wanted to use one letter to name this plane, what letter would that be? P. P. So I could say plane P. A second name for the plane, I still write the word plane. And then how many points can I use? Three, as long as they're not which three? On the line. So G, G, and F can't be used all together. So, but what can I use? That was a lot of letters. And you were all, it all sounded good. So D, H, G, H, G, F, F, H, D, something to that effect. Um, number two, we're going to name three collinear. What does collinear mean? Points on the same line. Good. So what are three points on the same line? D, G, and F. I will say that J is a point. It just doesn't have a dot for whatever reason. So if you want to draw one, um, it's supposed to be there. Number three, we're actually going to name all of the coplanar points. So what are all the points on the plane? Good. H, D, G, and F. Those are all the points that are on the plane. P is not a point. We're going to name some opposite rays. When we name a ray, where does our arrow point? Right. To the right. And opposite rays have the same starting point. What would the starting point be? G. G. So G, what do we think? G. You are both correct in different ways. So we could say GD is opposite with GF. A second set is there, and you can name that one if you want, and it would be GI is opposite with GJ. Both are correct. Either one. You didn't have to write both, but since you both mentioned. Um, we're going to name two lines. I kind of already highlighted them. Let's name the purple line first. Can I use the word line to name this line? I cannot. So I'm going to use notation. What does it look like above when you name a line? Yeah, a line with two arrows, and then how many points do you use? Two. So which two points do we want to use? You could say GI, JI, IG, GJ, JG, anything like that. And then for the orange line, can I use the word line? No, no there's still not a lowercase letter there, so pick two letters on there. DG, DF, FD, anything like that. All right, and then last, we got name a line segment. How do we name a line segment? A line above, and then two points. So, sure. GF, DF, GJ, GI, anything like that. Number seven, we have endpoints, and we want to find a midpoint. When you find the middle of two numbers, don't tell me the formula. What is the process that you do to find the middle between two numbers? You add them and divide by two. So that's why the formula looks like this. A lot of people get this mixed up and put a minus. But you're adding and dividing by two. So one plus negative seven, and then divide by two. What is one plus negative seven? Negative six. Negative six divide by two? Negative three. Because we got a whole number, you could have also just done it in your head and figured out what number was in the middle. Both are fine. The y's, however, we still add them. Divide by 2. This one would have been harder to do in your head because what's 6 plus 3? 9. nine. And 9 doesn't go evenly, or 2 doesn't go evenly into 9. So you can leave it like 9 over 2, or you can change it. What would 9 over 2 become? Four and a half, so 4.5 or four and a half, however you want to make it look, does not matter to me. Any questions on one through seven? Wonderful. Um, number eight, go ahead and take a highlighter really quick. Just one. Highlight the word segment bisector. And then we're going to highlight the segment bisector. The segment bisector is what cuts the segment in half. All we need to do is name it to identify it. So is this a point, ray, line, segment? Line. It's a line. How can I name this line? Line, line L. Line L. And that's it on that part. Then it says find the measure of QR. QR is the whole segment. What do we notice about this segment? 
the, yeah, the two segments were, are congruent to each other. So that means the length of QM is equal to length of MR. So if they're equal, we can plug in their lengths. What is the length of QM? 2x plus 6. And the length of MR? Correct, 5x minus 9. All right, so now we math. Which of these is the smaller x? 2x. So we're going to go ahead and subtract it. 5x minus 2x is 3x. Then minus 9. Going to rewrite it up here. What is my next step? Add 9. 6x, sorry, 6 plus 9 is 15. 15 equals 3x. I know I'm the one who said it, my bad. Divide by 3, and x equals 5. So is that the length of QR? No. no. Do I double it to find QR? No. no. What do I have to do with it? Plug it, Plug it in. So 2 times 5 plus 6. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 6 is 16. So technically, what should the other side definitely be? 16. 16. You can always plug it in to double check. It is indeed 16. All right, so that means the length of QR is 32. You're going to add them together. 16 plus 16 gives you the full length of the line. Number nine, we're going to simplify a little bit because it's a triangle. I don't have to go into it if you really want to know why. We can talk about it after. But go ahead and correct. Yours says five yards. Go ahead and correct it into one foot. It adds a level of complication that's not on your quiz or test. So go ahead and correct it to one foot. And then go ahead and write under the cost per foot of fencing because it was not included because you're going to pick fencing from Home Depot. So we're going to plot our points. We'll have A is negative 3, negative 1, so left 3, down 1. B is 4, 6, so to the right 4, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then C is 4, down 1. So fencing, where does, where does that go? On the inside of the triangle or around the triangle? Around it. Around the triangle. So we need to find the lengths. Um, something that was important to note is that each unit is one foot. So each box represents one foot. Um, what is the length of AC in that case? Seven feet, yep. And then BC? Also seven feet. And then how are we going to find the length of AB? The distance formula. So what two points am I plugging into the distance formula? A and B. A and B. So add our first x is negative 3. Second x is 4. And then my first y, negative 1. Second y is 6. Minus 3 minus 4. Negative 7. Negative 7 squared. And then minus 1, minus 6, negative 7 again. And then squared is still 49. 49 plus 49 is 98. What is that, 9.9? .9? Perfect. 9.9 .9 feet. So we are going to pick some fencing to figure out the cost per foot, but we need to know... Um, how much fencing we'll need. So we need the perimeter. So we're going to go ahead and add the 9.9 .9 plus the 7 and the other 7. So what is the perimeter around this triangle? 23.9. Yeah. Let me pull up Home Depot for a second.
So you're going to pick what kind of fencing you would like. I'll unfreeze. There you go. Alright, so we want wood, vinyl, metal, you know, chain links, nice. Privacy fence, picket fence. What do we think? Privacy. Privacy. That looks nice. It's going to be expensive, guys. So, what do we think? The tall one, what is this? It looks like a stall. Which one? The left or the right? The left? Okay. The left. All right, so we're going to do a little math for a second. Um, it's $97.88 for the width. It's eight feet wide, right? So what can we do to figure out how much it costs per foot? Divide. Can someone go ahead and do that for us so we can figure out how much per foot our fencing is going to cost us? 12.23? I didn't mean for my entire screen to be done. 12.24? $12.24. Apparently my whole screen cleared. What was our perimeter again? So 23.9 feet at $12.24 per foot. So what do we do with these two numbers? We're going to multiply them. So how much is it going to cost for this fencing? $282.92 and $54. Yeah. It's actually not terrible. Hurricane Irma knocked down our fence around our backyard, and it cost $2,000 to fix. And that was with my husband installing it. So. A wood fence, like the first option. And then we painted it. I think that was partially expensive. But anyways, so this is really cheap, I would say. Um, so are there any questions on the triangle? Okay. So the, these are the last two things. Hopefully we get to do together. Um, go ahead and correct this. This one we are going to make five feet. It's easier to do on a rectangle, and I can explain it at a later date. But you're going to correct it to five feet, so you can practice this for your test. So it's going to be five feet, and then we're going to figure out, you're going to pick flooring um, in a second. So that's why it was on the ground. The pen that was near your uh, desk, Tyler, was exploded. That's why they abandoned it. All right, we're going to graph. We've got a negative 3, 2. So to the left, 3, up 2. And then 2, 2. Over 2, up 2. Negative 3, negative 3. To the left and then down. And then 2, negative 3, over 2, and then down 3. So what shape do we have? It is a square. What's the length of each side? No, he's correct. It's 5. Remember how we rewrote this? So each unit on the graph represents 5 feet. So it's not necessarily 5 boxes. It's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 which means each side is 25 it's feet. 25 feet. All right, so when you refloor, is that the perimeter around the outside or is that on the inside? inside? That's on the inside. You can do a bunch of formulas for area for a square, which would we like to do? You can do length width times width, or you can do side squared. Either way, what is the length and the width? Five, yeah, 25 and 25. Oops. 25 and 25. Or you could just do 25 squared. Ooh, that's 625. Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. Okay. So 625 square feet inside of this square. So we are going to pick flooring. What room are we doing? The bathroom. The bathroom? The flooring. 625. For a bathroom? That's not bad. Oh, no, that's pretty big. That's pretty big. 
It's not really big. It's pretty big. Do you want to do the bathroom or do you want to do like your living room? Okay. So we all agree that's like laminate ish. You can get marble floor. This is laminate. So this is per square foot, just so you know. So one foot is that much. <laughs> you want the most expensive they offer? Yeah. Is it just Home Depot? But it's, it's two, so 279, two. Does it say 69? All right. 279 is it the highest you see? Was there? 279. You saw more expensive than 279. No, I saw a There's heated laminate flooring. Let's see what that looks like. I don't know. Y'all wanted bougie, so we're gonna look. Just two seventy nine for. It goes up a set. Two ninety nine. This is just the Home Depot, y'all. So two ninety nine. That's what we're seeing, right? Okay. This is the flooring we picked. It's pretty dark. Tannery brown oak. All right, so. It costs, what do we say, $2.99? Yeah. $2.99. So per square foot. So what are we going to do with these two numbers to find out how much it will cost? Multiply them. So times $2.99. Oh it's not that bad. For 600 square feet. Um, you don't want to know how much hardwood flooring is. How much is it? One thousand eight hundred sixty-eight and seventy-five cents. And seventy-five cents. The last thing we're going to fill in is how do you find the length of a diagonal segment? Distance the distance formula. So I especially put this here because of a worksheet you guys did. Hey. A few days ago. Look, I'm trying to help you later on. Oh, shoot. This was a square. You could be putting your things away. This was a square, and the sides were diagonal. A lot of people tried counting the length instead of the, di the distance formula. So make sure you're aware. So remember, of the quiz review, what number should you be through tonight? 14. 14. That's four problems. There were like five ish left on the test review. So make sure you work through. Oh, Miss Rashad, I need to have them like all the tests reviewed then tomorrow.